right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Dad Hack Chronicles. My name is Ed, and with me today, I have a special guest. Um, his name is Chuck Heeman. He owns a couple of the teams in the Independence League Baseball, the Casper Horseheads, the Western Nebraska Pioneers, and then you said you're also a part owner of the North Platte Plainsman. Is that correct? That is all correct. I don't know how it happened, but 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 it happened, and here we are. Yep, yep. That's awesome. Good for you. Absolutely. That's that's awesome. Um, to bring some you know baseball to uh, those areas, right? So that's yeah. pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, um, so I want to start with you know getting to know you know Chuck. You know, uh, how did you become a fan uh, of the sport of baseball growing up? Tell me about that. Okay. Well, I. Um... I was born in Detroit, so my younger, when I was a little kid, um, obviously was a was a Tigers fan, and kind of um, I don't, and 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 this is, I mean, I'm old, so it's a long time ago, and I don't remember a lot about it, but one thing I remember is I went to uh, our school, took us to um, an assembly at school, and Al K Line came and mm -hmm. talked to us, and gave us tickets, or the you know one of the team people gave us tickets. And they put us on school buses and we went to Al K-Line Bat Day. Mm -hmm. And I don't, the only thing I remember about that whole day is I had my Al K-Line Bat in my hand. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, obviously I'm thinking this is pretty cool. So uh, a little bit later in life, I was in high school and a friend of mine was, was uh, his dad was friends with the groundskeepers with the Cleveland Indians. I had moved to, uh, I had moved to a town outside Akron by then. And um, he was a, my my friend's dad was a, was a friend of the Bossards who ran the, the the field for the Cleveland Indians at the old place, and um, they got us on uh, the game day uh, grounds crew. Nice. So they gave us a little pass, little little employee pass. You know, I've still got it here in my office from 1975, and and we were the the little kids that would go and and uh, you know pull the tarp if it rained or change the bases in the middle of the game or do the, you know, do that kind of stuff. Nothing technical. We weren't putting pesticide on or anything like that. But um, so I, I spent a lot of my summer, uh, one of my high school years at, at Cleveland stadium at municipal stadium. And I, I spent a lot of time there and I got to know some of the front office people. And it's like, this is pretty cool. You know <laughs> what they do. It's, it's a job. And, and you can see that it was a job, but it's a pretty cool job to have. So a little bit later in life, um, I, I went in the Air Force. I got I got married. I got divorced, and I worked for the post office for a long time. But I got a chance to get into um, at a at a low level in the in the Northwest League up in um, in Bellingham, Washington, uh, to get on their staff. And there's a little more involved in that, but it, we don't have all day. Mm -hmm. But that was my first full time job in baseball, and this was in 1992. Um, and I got hooked on it. It's like I, I'd been a baseball fan forever, of course, but but to be involved in the sport and do something. Um, on, on, on the operational end of things where you're putting things together. I really got hooked on it and, and I've been doing it ever since. Um, uh, you know, uh, so I've been kind of all over the country doing this. Uh, I, I landed in, um, in uh, Phoenix in 2006, working for the Diamondbacks, worked my, kind of worked my way up there. And I was there for a few years and kind of got the itch to come back to the, to the A-ball collegiate, collegiate level Mm -hmm. And uh, did that as an employee. My wife and I uh, did that as employees in Oregon for a few years. And then a few years ago, about five years ago, we got the chance to become owners at this level. Um, and uh, and we've been in Gearing ever since. We moved in Gearing, moved to Gearing, Nebraska in the summer of 17. And we've been here ever since. And we've kind of um, acquired a couple more teams in, in, the, in the meantime. And and it's it's a blast. It just is. It's uh like, like I say, it is a business and it is a year round, all day, every day business. But it's, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this. I was just going to say, it's like, as long as you love what you do. Yeah, it does. You know, it's, it's a cool. Well, it's a cliche for a reason, because it's true. Yeah. You know, you know, um, I'm, ne I'm never going to get rich doing this. You know, we make an OK living. But but this isn't this is not you don't do this for the money. You do this because you love doing it. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, because. Uh, there's a lot of uh, recently we we have a lot of you know wood bat leagues, but what is it about the that attracted you to uh, a collegiate wood bat league? You know, and owning these teams. You know, was it just the opportunity, or is that something that you know you you just something about the league that you just liked? 
That's a good question because because I'll, and I'll compare it. When I was when I was working for the Diamondbacks, um, I had a pretty a pretty big position. You know, I didn't need uh, my you know the job I had was a pretty big job. But one of the things that I missed as I was working up through the minors, when I got to the majors, when I was at that position, I didn't know any of the any of the fans or any of the season ticket holders or the sponsors or you know the only people I really dealt with were the people that worked for me or worked with me. Mm-hmm. We had our little we had our little group. And those are the only people basically that we ever interacted with. We were at games, we saw the fans and everything, but, but there's, there was no real personal connection. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And one of the things I loved about coming up through the minors was that, you know, you have a small staff, um, you know, uh, the Diamondbacks, when I was there, they had about 260 full-time people. Well, here we have one, you know, so, <laughs> um, you know, but, but, but I loved that that uh, that connection, the personal connection that you make. And then the other part of it is, you know, I love that, you know, if like, like if something goes wrong, I know who to blame. Here. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and the fans and, you know, something's wrong at the ball game. The fans know right where to find the owner and they come right up and they tell you. But I love that. It's a lot of pressure to do things right and do things the way you want to do them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end of the day, you get a whole lot more satisfaction, I think, out of that then if you're part of a massive group and, 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 okay, you did this. Okay. Well, well here, you know, my wife and I, and, and Connie, our assistant GM here in, in Gearing, we're the, we're it, you yep. know, either, either we get it right or it doesn't get done right. Mm-hmm. And I love that pressure about it. And then, you know, I know here, I know we have, well, gosh, we have about 500 season tickets sold. We have about 180 season ticket holders and I pretty much know all of them. That's great. I know all of our sponsors, you know, um, we're part of the community here. My wife and I go to a lot of events. People know who we are. My wife is like the queen of Gearing, Nebraska. She's, she's in parades and she does speeches and everything, but there's, there's a lot of, a lot of that's, that's what motivates us. It doesn't motivate everybody. Everybody's not built the same, but, but that's what I like about working at this level mm-hmm. is that you get a chance to take something in this case. And even in Casper and North Platte, take something that wasn't there before. And you build it into this really cool community asset for people. It's really got almost nothing to do with baseball. Mm-hmm. It's got to do with bringing something to your community that 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 people enjoy, and and it improves the quality of life there. And you can look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, "Look, we did this," you know. And that, and that's really the satisfaction of it. So that's that's kind of why you know when when I first wanted to leave the Diamondbacks and brought it up to my wife, she thought I was nuts. <laughs> was like, you you know you've been doing this for for for. 15 years and you've gone from here to here to here to here. Now you want to do this. Well, it's not about being here or there. It's about being happy. Yeah. As long as you're happy and you're doing what you love, you know, again, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. And, and, and we are, we've been, it's, you know, my wife and my wife works alongside me and, and not everybody can do that for you guys out there. Not everybody can work with your wife every single day, but we work together very well. And, and that's, that's another little bonus. I get to, you know, I get to spend more time with my wife. So, yeah, but it is, it's, it's been a blast. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I love it. And it's the support, right. That you have, you know, you guys support each other. Um, yeah. because it's, you guys are running a business. It's a small business at the end of the day. Yeah. And if it, and if the business fails, well, guess whose fault it is. Yeah. You can't say, well, that guy messed me over or that guy didn't do it right. You know, it's, it's like, it, there's a, again, there's a lot of pressure to that, but um, you know, we love that. That's great. Now, obviously you, you, you know, we talked about the teams that you own. Um, how, how do you guys divide the time in between that? You know, those, the other teams, you know, how, how does that really work out for you guys? It's uh, and it's, it's all a matter of it all, it all really kind we, we look at ourselves all the time. It's like, how are we doing this? <laughs> it really, it really all comes down to people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in our, in our first couple of years doing this, that was one of our real struggles. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, finding people well, like um, I'll give you an example in Casper with the horse heads. We were having it's it's tough to find somebody who is even close to being as bought in as you are. Yeah, you know, a, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people want to go around town and they want to they want to wear the logo and they want to go to the bar and be the guy, but they don't want to do the work. So it's really tough to find somebody that you can you know, leave them run on their own and know the work's going to get done. And Mm -hmm. we had a real struggle with that our first couple of years. We've kind of, kind of settled into that now where like in in our case in Casper, we have a really good crew there. 
And so, you know, my wife and I basically just go up there every couple of weeks to say hi to people. And, you know, our grandkids live there now because it's our, it's our, actually our daughter and our son-in-law run the team. And then we have a general manager. So now it's more of a case of going to visit the grandkids. But for the first couple of years, we were doing all of this by ourselves, my wife and I. Wow. So, so it really comes down to, to people, finding the right people. We've got, we've got a great person here in Gearing. We've got a great person in North Platte that we can say, okay, we're going to be gone for three days. Here's the five things that need to get done. And, and we get, know get, it get done. done. Right. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's a massive thing. So finding the people is the kind of key to that. Um, I wouldn't recommend anybody trying to do this by yourself. We did that and it, and it, you know, almost killed my wife and, and kind of ruined our, our health and our well-being. So finding the right people when you're mm -hmm. running something like we're doing to where, you know, those people are trustworthy and reliable and they're going to get the job done. That's really the key to the whole thing. I, and, and I think you're right. Listen, and obviously I'm running something at a very much smaller scale, right? This podcast <laughs> and all that. But yeah. I would not be able to do this if it wasn't for the support of my wife um, for me to, you know, to do what I am doing right now. And, yeah. and I think that's important. Yeah, you're taking time away from other things to do this. Mm -hmm. And if and if and if your family's not bought in, you shouldn't be doing it. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so let me ask you, you know, you are in a new league, you know, I'm sure Optimus is, is really high right now. How, how, how is that, you know, all going, you know, schedule wise and all that stuff with, all, with, with your teams? It's, it's going well. Um, as anybody who's been following us kind of knows we were in an, another league, uh, mm -hmm. our first few years and we broke away last fall. Um, there's still a separation process going on. It's, you know, okay. there's, it's, you don't just do this, you know, yeah, you just don't do it. And be, just because you want it to, you're right. Right, right. We're still in the, you know, in, in the middle of some legal things, getting that separated, but we will. Um, so it's been, it's been good because, you know, and, and going back to the separation of this thing, and I'm not going to say too much about it, but there was yeah, a no. reason that we did it. You know, yep. we didn't just wake up one morning and say, gee, wouldn't it be fun to get into this uh, legal entanglement? And, and that's going to take five, six years to resolve. Wouldn't that be fun to do that? Mm -hmm. So we did this for a reason. And the group of people that we have with us now, um, you know, we're, we're dedicated to, number one, we're dedicated to each other, making sure we succeed. We're dedicated to doing this the right way, yep. um, ethically and honestly, and treating our people well, and making sure our bills are paid and doing, you know, just the, the things that you do and, and, and working with our communities to, to build these assets. So, the group of people that we have now, it's, it's really been, you know, really been good. We're, we're still feeling our way a little bit. We invented yep. a league, you know, we invented a league in about three weeks that, that normally would take like two years to get all your paperwork done and all your stuff done. But we did that, you know, our schedule is done. Our ballparks are secured. We're, you know, we're, we're on a good path. And so, I like it. yeah, you know, uh, it's, uh, we feel like we, you know, we're, we're, we know we're doing the right thing, and but we feel like that, that it's coming together really well. I think that's I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, and, and I'm wishing nothing but the best of luck for you guys to, you know, uh, get all that situated. No, oh, let me ask you, you um, because this is a collegiate Woodpet League. How is that handled, the choosing of the players? It, does each team do their own, um, you know, recruiting? You know, do you have, I'm sure you have relationship with certain colleges and things like that. Is that how you guys are doing, uh, managing that aspect of the player selection? Yeah, that's what we do. We, we, uh, each individual team, like in our case, I don't have time to go scout players. I don't know, you know, um, that's not my expertise. And I'm, I'm, and the times I've tried to do that, I'm bad at it. So <laughs> don't do that. You know, I have, I have, um, right now, I, I can count three people that I signed that I know were really good and a whole long list of that just, I made a mistake, you know. This guy makes one good throw and I want to sign him. So I don't do that. Yeah. So um, so what we do is and we're all the, we're all the same way. Every team recruits their own players. Mm -hmm. So we hire a coach. We hire our head coach um, and, and we trust that person to do the recruiting. Uh, each of our three teams, they have a head coach. I don't get involved in it. And there's another reason is because the pioneers historically have been pretty good mm -hmm. on the field. And the Casper Horseheads have historically not been pretty good on the field. And so people will come to me and say, well, you're stacking up the pioneers. So they win. And, you know, the, the kind of, you know, letting the, the players go and, and not so good on the horse heads. Well, 
I don't get involved in that. And that's, that's another reason why there's, uh, there's a line there yeah. that you're the coach. You've got to be on the bus with these guys all summer long. You recruit them, you do that. So um, that's, so each, each individual team, their head coach will recruit the players and uh, you know, there's not like a common draft or, or anything like that. So it comes down to the relationships that you have with colleges Gotcha. Uh, my, my wife and I have some really good relationships with a lot of colleges, especially out West from our days in the West coast league. Mm-hmm. So, so we'll go to our head coach and say, Hey, you need to call, you know, Oregon or Mount hood or lane or some of those colleges out there and talk to them because we know the coaches there and, and in reverse, the coaches out there know us mm-hmm. and they know that when they send a player our way, that that player is going to get taken care of. Correct. And that's Correct. a, that's a big thing for coaches, especially in a new league, mm-hmm. um, like our former league was. And now this one, now they know us already. Um, but when you're trying to establish that relationship, the coaches know they send a player to a team that we run, they know their players are going to get taken care of. Mm-hmm. And so that gave us a big advantage at the beginning. So it's all comes down to you finding a coach who has those connections. They recruit a good team and you, uh, you fire it up in May. And at the same time, they're, those coaches that are sending those players, they they're expecting for them to be some development while they're in in on these on these teams and in, in, in this league, right? So they're yeah, they went into play. There's certain things that they need to be taken care of as well. Yeah, and, every and, player, every player comes with a set of instructions. Yeah, you know, um, I'll give you I'll give you an example. We were in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Um, it was our second year there. I think it was 2012, um, and. Um, uh, Cal State Fullerton sent us a guy named uh, Tom Eshelman, who's now up in the big leagues with the Orioles. Mm-hmm. And he was coming out of high school. And his 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 instructions were, we don't want him to throw more than 30 innings. Mm-hmm. So we made him our closer. And he threw 30 innings. And he was amazing. I think he, oh gosh, I think he had like 40 strikeouts and one. I, know, I remember he had one walk the whole yeah. year. It was just darts, boom, boom, boom. So every player comes with that. Um, we get a lot of guys who are like a lot of our, the catchers that we get are going to be their starting catcher the following year when they go back to school in fall ball. Mm-hmm. So they get, they get, you know, 40 games of catching uh, during the summer, you know? Um, so every player has instructions from their college coach. And so our coaches, they're responsible for putting that puzzle together and knowing that, you know, well, this guy was a third baseman, but they want him to catch this guy. Um, he can only go four innings at a time. This guy, you know, whatever it is. So our coach looks at all, all of our 30 players, puts that puzzle together and that's and, how it's done. And then they handle it. And it, it, it kind of, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, uh, you are, you would be accused of, you know, stacking one team or the other. You want both <laughs> yeah. teams to be successful. You own both teams. I mean, it oh, just of course. I, sense. The, hey, the best, the best thing in my world is we play each other in the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense. I think that's kind of uh, yeah. it's funny. But, it's funny know. to hear stuff like that, though. But the, but but on the upside, at least people care. At least people care enough to point it out. You know, that's oh. what I always look at. Even if somebody's complaining about something, hey, you know what? At least they care enough to complain about it. At least yep. they're paying attention to your team, and we're, that's we're, what's important. We're doing the right thing. Yep. I love. I think it's a great idea. Now, how long is the season? When when you guys start? When you guys finish? You know, in your season. Uh, we start May 24th, mm-hmm. and our last our last uh, regular season game is July 30th. Okay, and then we have one round or one week of playoffs. We have two two rounds, so we our our league is set up in two divisions. I'm making notes here, like I don't know, but I know um, our, our league. I have to write things down, or I forget them. Our <laughs> league is set up in two divisions, so we have a first half and second half winner. Ah, in each gotcha. Division. They they play each other. Those two play in the championship series, so. Our last regular season game is July 30th. The last possible day we can play is August 7th. Gotcha. And, and then, then everybody, that, then by August 8th, everybody's gone. Yeah, all pack the players your bags, are you gone. Get out. The interns are gone. Everybody, it's like a ghost town around here. You have, it's, that's one of the really neat things is you, you're throwing together in the summertime, these summer leagues, 30 players, three coaches, 12 interns, all of your game day staff, you know, you're, you're throwing together 75 people, just boom. And, and most of them don't know each other. Yeah, you know, some of these players know each other from social media, but they don't know each other. Um, our interns don't know each other. You, you know, you have your meetings preseason, but they don't know each other. They haven't been in the same building, but you're throwing all these people together. And, and you know, it's a cliche, but you become a family mm-hmm. for good and for bad. You know, not everybody loves each other. Not everybody 
wants to hang around with each other, but you become a family, you know, and, and by the end of the summer, you know, everybody's crying because they have to go home and, and, you know, and we have, you know, we are our, our host families um, that, that host our players, you know, they, they have to let these guys go. And, and, uh, but you, you develop these, these relationships that last for years uh, for, with most of these guys, you know, some mm-hmm. of the, some of them come and go and they just go home and they get on with their lives. But we still hear from players that played for us 10 years ago in Oregon. Um, so that's what, again, that goes back to the, the theory of the difference between working in the majors and working at this level, those relationships that you build. Mm-hmm. So you, you get all these people in and you're playing, you know, 62 games in 74 days or whatever it is. And, and it's all day, every day for everybody for 10 weeks. And then it's over. But but so there's a there's a there's a lot of management and puzzle pieces to be put together there. So it's just it's just um, the season is great. And then you and then you spend nine months with no baseball games and a day like today when it's snowing outside and and you're going, man, I wish we could play some ball today. Is but, it, yeah. but, but then I've got my list of things I have to do today to get ready to play ball in May. Because you so still got a, a list of things to do. You got to You got to maintain the sponsorship. Oh, yeah. That. Oh, yeah. I've got. Um, you know, like last night in North Platte, we got approved uh, to do six fireworks shows. Well, now nice. I have to go do the permit. Now I have to do, go do the permits for those. But it, but but that's the neat thing. There's always something to do. No day, no day is ever the same. Mm-hmm. It's just not. It's not like sitting in a cubicle. You know, not to put down accounts or anything, but it's the, the doing spreadsheets in a cubicle. No day is ever the same for good or for bad, and that's what I love about it. That's great. And, and you're right, because today you're handling, you know, permits for North Platte yeah. or fireworks. Tomorrow you're dealing with something with uh, with the pioneers. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I got to hire some interns. I got to, you know, whatever, whatever it is, there's always something to do. And it's it's uh, it's it's just a blast. Let me ask you, I, I want to give, you know, the people that listen to the podcast a, a, a behind the scenes look how do how do is how do you handle, um, you know, the recruiting in in hiring of interns for your for your season how how does that work out uh we use a couple of websites basically there's a uh, there's a website called join handshake that a lot of colleges there's over 400 colleges on it mm-hmm. and then there's another uh, uh, website called internships.com mm-hmm. so we we put together our job descriptions we put them out there and just like any other job you people apply for it you interview them and if you if you like them you bring them aboard and and, uh, and, and get them here for the summer and put them in, you know, we have categories of positions, baseball operations, um, stadium operations, sales marketing, uh, social media, uh, live stream broadcast. So you, you talk to people that are interested in those fields, uh, you bring them in, they do their summer internship, and then our job is to make sure that they're successful. You know, I always get with these, we, the, the people that come with us and, you know, okay, you're gonna be here 10 weeks, by the end of the 10 weeks, what do you need to have on your resume to be successful, to make to make your summer worth it? You know, and and uh, a sales marketing person. Well, you know, I want to get some sales on my resume. OK, here's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, baseball operations. Well, I want to work. It's it's straight. All the baseball operations want to uh, guys want to get into analytics. They think we're Billy Bean or something and we're just not. <laughs> but, but, you know. Uh, well, I want to do analyzing launch angles and I was like, well, th- this isn't the place for you. This is but, not going to be the place. Somebody, yeah. You know, somebody, um, a stadium operations intern, most of these folks are interested in uh, logistics and facilities. Well, okay, here's what you're going to do. We have a ballpark. We have yep. a ballpark that needs to be kept up and operated every single day. So at the end of the, at the end of the summer, you're going to have that on your resume. I was part of the team that did this. So, um, our interns come from all over the country, just like our players. We put them in host families. Um, we, you know, we, we work them pretty hard during the summer. We can't do this without the interns. You know, the three of us that are here, it's too big of an operation in the summer for us to do that. So we try to get 10 to 12 interns in for the summer and um, they have their duties to do. And then everybody helps each other and we go. That's great. I love that. I love that, that, you know, they're getting wealth of knowledge. It's like you're still in, in school pretty much, but you're, yeah. you're, you're working. Everything that you've learned, you're applying during yeah. that summer. They've never seen the practical end of it. You yeah. know, um, they've never, they've never seen that. You know what? I may have to empty trash cans today <laughs> or, or, or I may have to wash the uniforms today pull or, the tarp. I may throw, or I may pull the tarp or I might throw batting practice today. I might, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, they've never seen the practical end of it. Some of them do some stuff at their colleges, but most of these folks, yeah, you're right. It's all classroom work. 
this is where, and I tell all of them, I said, this is where you're going to find out if you want to really do this or not, Mm -hmm. because you're going to do everything. And you might find something that you think you want to do this, but you really love doing this. You know, when I, when I first got into baseball back in uh, 92 in Bellingham, I wanted to do play by play, Mm -hmm. but everybody does. That's the fun part, you know? Um, So I found that that wasn't really an option, but I I started doing, um, I got a lot dumped on me basically because I took it on. It's like uh, a lot of the operational stuff, Mm -hmm. the concessions and the ticketing and the merchandise and making sure the crew cleaned up the ballpark. But I found that I really loved that. It's like, Oh, okay. And, and so I I took that path as, as I kind of built through the, the minors and up to the majors um, I was really known as, as a logistics operations guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's because I could put together the show and make it look seamless. You know, what you want is when, when you open the gates for the fans, everything's just there. Yep. They have no idea what, you know, that I'm, that I'm back in October lining up, who's going to do the hot dogs, whatever it is. They have no idea all that work. And I don't want them to know. I want them to come to the ballpark and everything is just there and ready to go. That's what I want. But that's where I get my satisfaction. And over the years, I did that. And I found that I really loved that. Where So where when I first wanted to do this, I was looking at one thing. I went another path. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, when, I was, when I was younger, I wanted to do play-by-play. So now the joy of it is that I own the team. So anytime I want to, I can walk up and do play-by-play. That's right. I you grab, can. I grab the headphones and, I, and I'll say, you know, hey, Zach, you know, sit aside for a minute. And I'm going to sit here and talk on the radio for five minutes. So, but, but, um, you know, with interns, when they come here for the summer, I emphasize to them, look around, see what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to do everything. And, and this, again, this is where you're going to find out if this is the life for you or if it's not. So, yeah. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. You know, and now you're as an owner, right? Like you said, you get to do do anything I want. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like my, my dream was to become a a radio person and look at me now, you know, exactly. There you go. There you go. You're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I love if that. I want, I, and, I want to go up and shove the guy aside and play like I know what I'm doing on the radio. I can do that. And, <laughs> and you know, my wife will be the only one that can do anything about it. So <laughs> your wife is yeah. the one. Who's, okay, it's time for you to go. So, so, no, not so fast, young man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let, let me being a fan of you know of minor league baseball and sure. uh, specifically hats and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me ask you, because I'm, I'm looking at your website right now. I'm technically literally going on your websites, all three wow. of them. Um, okay. But uh, I, I want to know, um, is, is are any of the teams ready to get some dad hats together? So that way I can definitely buy one from every team that you have. Yes. Yes. And the only reason we're doing dad hats is you. So just so you know. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, we started doing dad hats last year. No in 2020 here in Nebraska Mm -hmm. and couldn't keep them in stock. Just couldn't. Um, And if you know anything about hats right now, for some reason, order time on hats is ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's totally backed up. We had to order our player hats back in October to get them in April. We're talking like six months. Oh my God. Yeah. So right now, so, so right now, and we've got hats ordered. They won't be here till April. And people want them. People want not just the dad hats, but our hats, especially every single one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we we aren't going to get until then. We we sell out of out of hats a lot. And so so we have to kind of look at um, like if are there any local vendors who maybe have some in stock in their, mm-hmm. in their warehouse and they're maybe they're not exactly the, the hat that we want, but it's better than no hat at all. It's better so, than no merchandise. So, you're right. Yeah. So like in North Platte yesterday, I was in North Platte and we were talking to our local supplier and she's going to try and find what she has. Maybe we can get 18 of these or, you know, something like this where it's not the full load, uh, but at least we're going to get something. But yeah, half time ordering is it's just insane right now. And it's not uh, just I you get, guys. I can get sweatshirts and hoodies in two weeks and and I'm fine. But but hats are nuts. Uh, so you have to find somebody local that's actually got them in stock and then do the best you can. You know, it's not going to be, we're going to get uh, the player hats that we're getting uh, in North Platte. Uh, since we got a late start, they're going to be pretty darn close to what they should be. But the actual player hats won't be here till mid-June. Mm-hmm. So what we're getting is something that looks just like it, but it's not the exact same hat. So there's the hat industry is, is just insane right now. 
and the demand, and, and not just for yeah. you know someone like me, yeah. but the demand. Well, look, look, has, look at your wall behind you. you oh yeah, you don't even have half of your hats up there. Yeah, no, I don't exactly. Yeah. And it is it's insane how the demand for like it, it's it's become its own niche, right? Uh, so many people yeah. like you know want their their hats for certain Agreed. teams. And it's and I think it's one I think it's great because it gives, you know, teams like and I'll be honest, like, you know, teams like the Western Nebraska Pioneers, which I didn't know much about a couple of years ago. But now that I've, I've met you and I've seen you guys on social media and the activity that you guys have, then I, I want to buy a hat from you guys because I want to support the team. And I think that's a uh, there's a other, so many other fans that can do the same thing. Yeah. Well, obviously, the more hats we sell, the happier I'm going to be. So yeah, you got but, that right. <laughs> the happier my wife will be. She can go get some new shoes or something. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, but you're right. It's and it's there's you can uh, you know, I what I saw somebody. Oh, my gosh. They had uh, it was a regular it was an affiliated minor league team and they had 27 different hats. Mm -hmm. and, and we you know we'll never we'll never do that. Right. But you do need to mix it up some. Uh, one thing, one thing in, in, in with the pioneers, it's our fifth year. So we're doing a fifth year logo, fifth year hat. Um, so, but you have to mix that up because people yep. will, they'll, you know, we've got people here that will buy every single hat that we have. Uh, and we come out with and I know people hat. that can do that. Yeah. Make sure, make sure that you save me one of those hats. They collect them. Um, so you know, like you behind your, on your wall there, you collect them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you're really, you're really right. It's, it's really a niche industry where, you know, um, we're never going to have 27 hats, but we'll have eight different kinds of hats, you know, especially this year with the fifth year, we have the special hats, but, but uh, you know, you, you try to come up with designs that people like and, and you go with it and hopefully they do. And, and here it's been pretty successful. Um, we have, I think we have three hats, actual hats in stock right now, mm -hmm. three actual, not, not styles, three hats. Wow. That's, that's yeah. crazy. Three. The actual hats, yeah, yeah. And I love your because they're on a boat from they're on a boat from China somewhere. You're waiting to get embroidered. Yeah. <laughs> and I love your jerseys that you have, like your different, you know, theme jerseys. You got your ugly sweater, cancer awareness, yeah. um, special Olympics. That's great stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and even you know uh, the pawn <laughs> the pawn ears, the little the pawn ears, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, what we what we started doing with that, it was it was a way for us to help the community. Um, you know, we're, we're a small minor league baseball team and we don't always have the ability to just write checks to donate to people. Right. You know, so, so we started doing these things. Um, we obviously, we're not the only ones doing this. There's people all over the country, but we found that, um, it was, so we take these jerseys and the players wear them and we auction them off on, on our, on dash online. And then at the ballpark after the games, and that money goes to that specific charity. Love it. So it's a, it's a way for us to facilitate raising money for charity through through the sponsors that that are on the jerseys, and then also you know with us helping that. Without you know we can raise more money by doing that than we ever could by writing them a fifty dollar check. Correct. So, and, and so it's really it's, 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 it's all it all feeds into becoming a part of your community. This is a way great. that we can help the humane society, you know, in in a way that everybody likes and has a good time with. I think that's great. I love it. I, I look and I'm looking at, you know, the horse heads in, you know, uh, website as well. I mean, the logo is great. I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> let me ask you something about the planes, because I, I love their, I, I think it's a very different logo than yeah. a lot of other teams have put out there. And it's, I, I think of it as very tombstone uh, logo. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Exactly what it's supposed to be. So thank you for that. Okay, good. So I, I yep. got it right because like, it's a different yep. cowboy hat than you know you would yep. normally see. Great. Well, if you if you if you kind of go into the the um, you know every town's got something. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. here here in Gearing, it's the Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail, the old Oregon Trail runs a block from where we're sitting right now. Right. So there's so their tourism industry in Nebraska is very tourism oriented. You wouldn't think so, but they are. Um, here in this area, it's all built on. Uh, the the uh, the Oregon Trail running through here and in North Platte, a lot of what they're built on is um, Buffalo Bill Cody. Yep. Um, I guess I guess he lived there at the end of his life. And um, actually, we were just over uh, yesterday visiting the uh, where they have um, the Nebraska Land Days Festival every year. And the last house he lived in is on that site and it's a museum. Nice. So, 
And there was an old uh, minor league team there in the 50s called the Plainsmen. So when we came up with this thing, you know, you, you look at when you're trying to name a team, you look at are you going to go with one of these stupid names that that just is an attention getter that you're going to change in three years anyway? Mm-hmm. You know, the the flying pit monkeys or something. You know, well, that it's not that kind of a town. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a small town in the middle of Nebraska. And and I would rather, you know, people will laugh at it for a minute. But after a while, it's like, yeah, it's kind of dumb. So so we kind of went back to the back to the basics on that. Um, so you're right. The, uh, the, the theme is that it's, um, it's kind of a, a cowboy town. It's a railroad town and a cowboy town, but the, the Buffalo Bill thing kind of kept coming back to us. And so when, when our, our logo designer kind of got that put on him, it's like, here's kind of what we want. So we came up with that logo. And then another part of it is the colors. We kind of wanted to stay away from everybody's going to, to, to blue or red, white, and blue, or, you know, like, like a few years ago, everybody was doing teal, you know, and everybody's doing it. And so we kind of looked around and where the colors came from was from our old team in Medford, the Medford Rogues, uh, that Myra and I, my wife and I started from scratch, you know, um, um, a while back. And really those colors, we really liked them. So when we put the whole thing together, um, our logo designer came up with that and, and everybody, uh, everybody voted yes. And here we are. I, I love it. You're right. And, and I, and this is one we of my, we've got a lot of positive comments on it. So that's really good. Oh yeah. I, one of my gripes that I have with a lot of teams is that, it, like you said, the red, white, and, you know, green, you know, and, and I'm sorry, red, blue, and, and white, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, it, sure. if it fits your, your local identity is perfect, but I think that in order, you know, for you guys to go in a totally different direction and going with those colors, I think it's great. I think it, and it stands out even more because you're not, you know, blending in with the rest of the other teams. Right. As I sit here in my red, white, and blue shirt from the Western Nebraska Finder. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but it makes but, sense but, though. So I've got one that is, you know, and 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 Casper is, um, it's it's all actually, it's and this is my fault. I did not even think about this one with the Casper. It's basically the same colors as the Denver Broncos. Yeah, the the, uh, the mango, mango and navy, mm-hmm. and um, and that's and that's fine because this is Broncos territory. But uh, we kind of want it. And then another thing you look at is what else is in town. What colors are the are the high schools or the college? Or you, you, get, you want to stay away from that. So that's kind of where it all came from. But when we when we narrowed it down in North Platte, that's where we landed. I love it. I think you guys, uh, you know, I, from what I've seen and from what I've, you know, heard from other fans of, you know, when you guys are, we, we study the logos and all that, I knocked it out of the park on that one. And, Thank you. you know, Thank you. I got a really good job. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so before we go, um, you know, again, I want to thank you for, for coming on and, you know, really putting, you know, highlight, you know, your teams and the league. I think you guys are going to be doing an absolutely. Well, I could talk job. about this all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love, we love doing what we do. So I'm, 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 any chance we get to talk about it, it's really appreciated. Perfect. Uh, if I ever, you know, make it over there, I would definitely, <laughs> you know, we'll do so. Cause I think, you know, um, I think, uh, uh, you know, collegiate wood bet league is one of my favorite, you know, sports, you know, when it comes to minor league baseball, collegiate wood bet, I think it's, you know, and it's the level of competition is really, really good too. You know, yeah, people are surprised by that. Um, these are for the most part, they're the best players on their college team and they're looking to get better and get seen to get to the next level. That's their whole goal. Even if they're at a Juco, they want to get seen by a D one school or D two school. They're all they, and they 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 play hard. They play hurt. You know, um, they it's it's the grind for them. Again, it's 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 not the three day a week college season. It's six days a week for 10 weeks. Yep. And so they they really they, they don't come here to mess around. We always tell people when you start a new team and you tell them you're going to bring 30 college kids to town for the summer, you kind of get the oh, my God, they're going to come and burn our town down and, you know, ransack the place. And no, no, no. These guys are serious about what they do. Yep. And you will find that when they come to town, they're here to get better. If they want to mess around, they'll go home and mess around with their high school buddies yep. for the summer. They, you know, they, um, and, and there is, you know, there is no tolerance from these guys. They mess up, they go home, mm-hmm. but, the, but we've very rarely ever had to be in that situation. These guys are serious about making it to the next level, whatever that level may be, you know, whether it's going from Juco to D one or D one to get seen by a scout to get, to move up three rounds in the draft, whatever it is. That's what they're here for. 
I love and, it. And that's, that's really the cool part of it because you do, you get a great level of baseball at the, at, at the college, at the collegiate wood bat level. So, you know, uh, um, I've had many people tell me you have a better level of play here than you do at the next level, the low A. I because agree. Low a, low a is, is basically three guys that are good and they put a team around them. So those three guys get better. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I would, I would stack up some of our pioneer teams against any low A team anywhere. I love it, but, but it's the, the level of baseball. People are very surprised when they come and see it. I, you know, you're absolutely right. I think that the level of competition in those leagues are by far superior sometimes in the low way. And you're right. And you're absolutely right. Even the rookie ball, when the rookie ball was out, right? Yeah. Both, yeah. It, it, that was some tough baseball to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. It's it's, and I worked in Bellingham, Washington was rookie ball mm-hmm. and we had four good players but they put the team together. So those four good players get better mm-hmm. and you just, you, you know, nothing against the other guys, but the other guys aren't going anywhere and they know it. It's a chance for them to play baseball for another year and make, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. But, but uh, here, you know, gosh, probably half our team is going to go somewhere at the next level. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So before, you know, uh, before I go into my famous, not so famous questions, anything else and, uh, that you have guys having the plans that you, that you can, you know, a, a say or a do, you know, now would be the time, my friend. Well, I think, you know, with the independence league we're we're off and running, we, we, you know, we have our nine teams in the one travel team. I, I think that, you know, nothing's sure until it's sure. But I, really, <laughs> right. I really think that this is going to be over the next couple of years, one of the better, better leagues and better run leagues in the country. We, we, talk to a lot of people in other leagues about how they do things and, and what's the right way to go. So uh, we'll, we'll be adding more teams in 2023 and beyond. We've already got a few lined up um, that they're just too late in the process to get going for this year. So you'll see after this season, some more teams pop up in our footprint. And that's another thing that's very important is kind of staying in our footprint, but this is um, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's stressful, but it's an exciting time for us to get this thing going. And, and, um, you know, appreciate, you know, on our end of things, any, anytime anybody is interested in talking to us about our league, it's flattering. So just being here really means a lot to us. Awesome. I love to hear that. I'm probably going to end up reaching out to, you know, if it's okay with you, right. You know, some of the players and coaches. So that way Absolutely. we get to see. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's perfect. Awesome. All right. So here we go. Are you ready? Okay. The, okay. The dumb question part of the program. I'm ready. That's right. I love it. Exactly. All right. Hopefully uh, so- I don't perjure myself here. <laughs> <laughs> The very first question I ask everybody, um, when you go to a ballpark, what is the very first thing that, you know, food or drink that you, that you have as a fan, as a fan? What kind of food do I get? Yep. What do you get? Like anything local, any beer? What, what is it that you, I, I, you you know, I haven't done this for so for so long. I I stay away from hot dogs. So Mm -hmm. I look for so because I just like, my God, I can't look at another hot dog. Um, I, I always, when I go to a ballpark, I always look for something um different or something local okay uh what, depending on what they have um if they have like a a, a philly cheesesteak stand, stand or something that's a local vendor because we totally believe in local vendors so as a business person when i go to somebody else's ballpark it's the first thing i look for mm-hmm. what are they doing what are they doing the where, where where it's a local person where i can go see what they do and maybe steal an idea but but instead of getting a, like a regular hot dog or or popcorn or something like that Food and drink, first thing out. Yep. I think that's, you know, yep. for, the, for the most part, everybody has, agrees with you. Anything yeah. that is very hyper-local, it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cake or pie? Pie. Good man. It's a good pie. answer. With okay. ice cream. Pie, pie a la mode. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I qualify, I, my pie. I qualify my pie choice. Pie a la mode. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. Uh, what was the last movie that you watched? Uh, in person or at, on TV? TV. Let's go with TV. Oh gosh, what did I just watch? Um, uh, don't look up. Oh the yeah, just movie about the asteroid. Yeah, I just yeah. watched that the other day on Netflix. Yeah. That's right. Yep. I gotta watch it. I, we started. Me and the wife started it, and we have to. We have not finished it. Uh, with a three year old, it's kind of hard to finish anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, in one yeah, sitting. Yep. Um, in person, in person, we saw the three fifty five last week. 
I've not watched it uh, either. Movie. It's it not better better than you would think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll take it. I'm gonna have to add it to the uh, to the list. Um, okay. Tacos or burritos? Same thing. <laughs> it's exact same. tacos and burritos. Uh, my okay. So so my <laughs> wife is my wife is from Mexico. Nice. And so, well, for me, I mean, if I had to pick one, it'd be a burrito. But I always tell her. She says, "Well, do you want a quesadilla or a taco or a it's the same thing." It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tortilla and meat and lettuce and cheese. And you either wrap it up or you fold it up. It is delicious. That's all that matters. Taco Bell has three things in our menu and it's, it's all dressed up different. But if you're asking me which one I'm going to eat, it's a burrito. Yeah. I, you know what? I greatly appreciate that. I love it. Theme park or water park. Theme park for sure. I'm way too old for a water park. (laughs) <laughs> you know what? You're right. Theme park is my great. younger days. My younger days, water park, uh, theme park. Yep. <laughs> uh, Pepsi or Coke? See, I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Who's going to see this amongst my corporate partners? Let's see. How about because we go with in, both? Yeah, let's say both. Now, I'm. Um, um, if I had to pick one, I'd go. Uh, Pepsi only because they have Diet Mountain Dew, and that's one of my uh, one of my vices. One of your but, everybody uh, gotta have has to have a vice, right? Yep. In uh, in Gearing, uh, Coke is our vendor. In Casper, Pepsi is our vendor, and in North Platte, um, we actually had a really good meeting with Pepsi yesterday, so they'll probably be it. So I have to depending on who's going to see it. If you ask me what I'm going to drink, it's going to be Diet Mountain Dew, and, and there's no secret; everybody knows that. No, yeah. not, I, I love me some Mountain Dew, so that's a good there thing. Go. Uh, pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Uh, I say yay. Mm-hmm. I know it's uh, not a popular view, but I say yay. Yes. Believe it or not, on this podcast, everyone to have asked this, you know, for the, the majority of the people have said yay on pineapple. So okay, you're not in the minority. I don't I don't see the harm. I don't see what the uh, if people want to argue about something. It's a weird thing to pick. <laughs> you're, right. you're right. I just yeah. think it's I, I think I find it fascinating. And now yeah. I mean, personally will not order it but I will not okay. take it out of the pizza. There you go. There you go. So, um, all righty. So we, well, you know, the one, the winter Olympics are about to start here in, uh, in uh, February. Right. I think tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I think so. Tomorrow. Yeah. If you were to, you know, were to pick a, a, a sport to participate in, what would the sport be? You know, if in my younger days, I would say ski jumping mm-hmm. because it just looks like a blast. It does, you know? doesn't it? You know, as long as you can land correctly, it looks like a blast. At this point in my life, being as old and beat up as I am, I probably would go with luge because you basically just lay there and steer the thing. <laughs> it just like, you know, that's it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you have to do something, but I wouldn't worry so much about the landing in a luge where, whereas uh, if I was, at my age, doing a ski jump, I'd be a little more worrisome. I like it. I think I like that answer. It's a good answer. I love it. Mountains or beach? Beach for sure. Oh yeah. Mountains you have. Too. Mountains you have to go up, and I'm. I'm that's not me. As someone yeah. from As someone from Puerto Rico, I miss the beach all day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I wish I was back there right now. Um, <laughs> okay. Worst job that you've ever held? Ever? Oh gosh. Let's see. I took a temp job one time. This is many, many years ago, just as a uh, working in a, uh, a factory and they made um, the, the end product was like a rubber hose that connected into something. Mm-hmm. And my job was to put my finger in with sandpaper and sand the end of it. Oh Lord. To rough it up just over and over. And, oh. and I was like, what in the hell, you know? And I was there for like a day and a half. You know? And you're like, that's it, I'm done. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's many worse jobs, but in, in my in my experience, yeah, I've been that that's probably the one where I was just going, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> then you're right. That yeah. is pretty, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's, I couldn't yeah. do it. I was like, after half a day, I'm like, all right, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, one you do one, it's kind of cute. You do, you know, 750 in a day. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> is this over? Yeah. You look up and there's only been 15 minutes. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So in your, if, if your life had a mascot, what would that mascot be? Clown. Absolutely. Clown. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, don't even have to think about that. 
because because just man just it's the, a clown show huh there's just the things that we have been through just in the 30 years I've been in baseball, not even before that, just the things that we've seen and been through. It's like, Oh my God, really? That happened. And that happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Yes, it did happen. <laughs> yes, it did. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. Well, one last one here and then we'll let you go. Uh, if, if an animal could talk, which one do you think would be the rudest animal? Um, a cat <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you know a dog you can, a dog you can tell what they're thinking because they let it out a cat just looks at you <laughs> right. it, 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 you know that cat's thinking something and if it could talk it would say it yeah. you're right you're absolutely right cats well just there you're right you're absolutely right um well my friend thank you so much for uh for doing this um where can people find your teams on social media uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. The, uh, the, the team websites are the team names, mm -hmm. casperhorseheads.com. Okay. What, uh, uh, well, I should say wnpioneers.com. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to spell out the whole thing and North Okay. And they have all the social media connected to them. Our, our web provider has done a really good job of putting these things together for us. So you can get all the information you need there. And anybody that, that anybody that wants to get a hold of us and talk about what we do, obviously we can, we can talk about it all day. Absolutely. Man, and I appreciate the time, man. I really do. This is neat. Yeah. And, and I, I, I really did truly have a wonderful time. And thank you for the, you. you know, the behind the scenes look of, a, you know, running a team, you know, that yeah, in, in the collegiate. People woodbed. think people think you open up on May 24th and everybody just shows up and no, this is <laughs> this is a year round all day, every day thing. And it's and it's, a, it's just it's a, it's a great business to be in. If, if you're built to do that, mm -hmm. you know, it's if, if this is what you love, this is a great opportunity to do that. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, I'll put all this information on the show notes. So that way, everybody go ahead and uh, make sure to support uh, support the team. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. Anytime.